Crema, crema or, or an ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> crema or, or an ambulance. It's, one. it's burning. Thunderosa eating taco. I, I told you guys that I had somebody super famous here, here at Tacos Manolito. That are from Mexico City. I just talked to the lady. She said that they have 25 different restaurants in Mexico. There's one in Spain, one here, and I forgot the other part. So this is a big deal. This, this is brand new. It has the best thing. So, no further ado, I want to introduce my guest. Yo! Paul! I'm Paul Hauser. Hauser. I, I love this woman. Big, big fan of her work. I love Mexican food, so when she was like, do you want to come eat Mexican food with me? I was like, that's a very easy yes. Because she was going to take me to this like super fancy <laughs> So I was like, vamos a comer tacos. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, you want to go to a country club? She's like, you want to go to a taco restaurant in Sunset Boulevard? I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm being a Hollywood uh, idiot. So here we are. <laughs> so what is your favorite taco restaurant? It's tough. I mean, listen. There's so many that I like. I love El Pastor, let me just say that. Okay. Cool. Big El Pastor guy with the little shaving of pineapple. If he knows, they have it. he knows. I just like, I love Mexican food. I'm never not in the mood for Mexican. There are times where I don't want pizza. There are times when I don't want sushi. There's never a time I don't want Mexican. This sounds, um, I don't know if you know, I'm like every time you say something, if you say something a certain way, I'd be like. Pastor yeah. Molina is my favorite. Yeah. Am I cursing this? Yes, yes. The editor will cut it. So I'm going to say I'm going to say Oh my say god. All the big swears. It's going to be great. What are you going to get? Fuck. I don't know. They have vegan tacos, so I might, I'm inclined to eat a vegan taco. Vegan oh. taco? What? I always eat meat. You're like the most in shape person because I you know. know how much cardio, you know how much cardio I have to do to eat tacos? Because I do three tacos last and then a week. So you know. Okay, I get it. No, I mean, no one knows you better than you. But yeah. I, I think maybe you should get, get like a vegetarian one, but then get one meat one. So I'm going to get definitely a signature taco is the cappuccino, which is our famous Mexican taco with cecina, homemade chorizo, because I love chorizo. Hey, chicharron, you know what chicharron is? Chicharron. Oh. Chicharron is a pork rice. Oh, that's right. Okay. I've yeah. seen that in stores. <laughs> I haven't had it, but I've seen it. So we're, I'm gonna Yo, have that one. Yo, chorizo with eggs is the best. Have you had any? Have you had tacos in Texas? Um, no, I haven't. Well, next time you come to Texas, either I take you to eat tacos, or you come to my house and eat tacos and me and my dog and everybody else. She's, right. she's promising this. Right. I have video and I, footage. And, and I said I was. Next time I'm here, I'm gonna make him mole. And you're not gonna post mole. it. You have to like make. Why would I post I don't know. We're new friends. Oh my god! Is this, is, it, is this the third or second time we see each other? So. I was a fan from NWA, got very excited when I saw her go to AEW because I was like, this woman needs to be on a bigger platform. Uh, and I think we met at, I think it was Revolution yes. in March of yes. 2020. Yes. Yeah, we met at Revolution at the bar. That was back when I was drinking. That was a lot of fun back then. And, uh, and we marked out on each other. Yes, we did. And pretty hard. <laughs> I was like, I and, just want you to know. Like, this one moves, man. And then I, I texted you after your match with Grit when yes. you were covered in blood. And I was like, yeah, one of the greatest matches <laughs> I've ever seen. So he knows this. So yeah. I know yeah, I know you're pretty hungry, so let's let's order. Okay, let's order. Let's okay. see stuff. Okay. Misha Pro Wrestling. I'm so much time ruining company for sex. Crazy train. January 29, Garbro, Texas. Seven match card. Three championship matches. Two main events. Are you excited? He's like, then. <laughs> How am I supposed to not move? And the song is playing and I uh, <laughs> All right, man. So, what do you. Right. I'm definitely going to do a pastor taco. Okay. Triple pasta. Um, red, green, or uh, uh, not avocado, as we established. Yeah, he's allergic to avocado. Um, if anyone ever wants to like hurt me, you can just don't avocado. say that. They will send you avocados. Uh, just the bread sauce, please. Okay. Uh, maybe on the side. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, can I do no chopped onion or not an onion? You got it. Unless it's like jalapenos. Uh, so I'll do the one pastor, and then I think I'm also gonna try. You know what? Let me try that. Um. 
Costello Campechano. Campechano. Mirenlo, he speaks Spanish. <laughs> we tried that. He speaks Spanish. Chopped onions. So I'm going to take it with the chopped onion jalapeno. I'm going to honor the way you oh, make you it. Eat it no matter what. He's going to be upset. So those are the two I'm thinking. What do you think? A mí me vas a dar el campechano. Okay. Y, y, bueno. Oy, ¿tienes cactus? Yes. Yeah, 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 no, I don't think so. Oh, damn, like I'm. No, I don't think so. 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 No, Yes, please. I already have a family master like Kalaika. Okay. Anything else for you guys today? No, for now, that's it. Alright, so we're going to get started. So first, Keith has never tried Kalaika, so I want you to try it. Wait, I'm, I'm going to ask, what is it? Hibiscus. Okay, it doesn't have beetroot, does it? Beets? No, it's hibiscus. Okay. Are you allergic to beets? No, I am allergic to beets. Okay. Are you allergic to beets? 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 Okay. Are you yeah, it hurts like a motherfucker. Yo. What? <laughs> I want to like bathe in this. Are you kidding? I came, I came to LA as I had, you know, I'm trying to be as famous as he is. Um, but unfortunately, they you're didn't. To, you're going to have to gain a lot of weight and do comedy. <laughs> so, Mr. how you guys started with, with being an actor? And how old were you when you started? Yeah, so. I loved performing from a pretty young age. I, uh, my favorite things, just for context, I was obsessed with music, pro wrestling, and movies. And I realized pretty early on that I didn't have the patience to learn a musical instrument. I didn't have the, the physique um, that I could uphold to be a wrestler, or the pain tolerance probably, but I did love acting, so I, I started doing theater when I was like seven years old at school, in church like church plays and then when I was in high school I went nuts and I went wrote for the school newspaper yeah. was in choir did 10 plays in four years did stand-up comedy I wrote two movies before I graduated from high school uh, I just kind of I don't know I just kind of like over indulged in my creative pursuits that's pretty freaking cool okay what do you do? how did wrestling like, what was the first ever review in wrestling? How did it came about? My earliest memory, I was six or seven years old. Sixty-seven? Six or seven oh, years old. Oh, you old are you now? I was 60. Have you seen the movie Jack with Robin Williams? I'm That's aging it. in that regard. Earliest memory, I was watching Clash of the Champions when yes. I was like six or seven, sitting on my belly in my uncle's bedroom, and we were watching it, and like, I saw Arn Anderson, El Gigante, Jushin Thunder Liger, I saw all these different guys, yes. and it, what was crazy to me was some of them looked like superheroes, and others others just looked like my dad's friends. Like, yeah. Art Anderson looked like your friend's angry oh, dad. Oh, here we go. Right. I have the red one, and I have the red one. Is there anything else in case you guys? You need anything else? God, this is gonna hurt coming out. <laughs> What? I'm like, follow. what did I sign up for? Um, really good tacos, probably. What is it? Like, it has, it has jalapeno, right? Jalapeno and chopped onion, which which I'm not super keen on, but I'm going to give myself over to the process. Mine is very simple. I'm getting a puta con nopales, señores. ¿Quién dijo yo con uno, con un montón de cosas that I don't know what it is? I ate so much Italian food earlier. What is that, spam? What is the No, it's this cecina. This is cecina. What is cecina? I don't know how you're looking at it. What's going on today? Oh, wow. So you were saying about, you know, that they look like your, your uncle. Yeah, okay. no, the, you have the idea of, like, some wrestlers look like regular people and some wrestlers <laughs> look like freaking aliens. And I just found that, and some look like both, Chris Statlander. 
Um, so I just like I I was fascinated and drawn in by that. Yes. But my favorite wrestler of all time is Sting because um, I just felt like he always worked at a high level. He always uh, even now, dude. Is like seeing him. I mean, him, even now, seeing him insane. on on TV and. Oh, this is like the chicharron is cracking, y'all. It's cracking. Sting in the showmanship. Always. He uh, he did some high risk, um, high spot moments for the time, and uh, and he worked at a high level. And then like, dude, the crow sting. Is there any story cooler than crow sting? No, no, it's not. Literally no. Remember when that movie? What was that movie? The crow. No, not the crow. When he uh, did the matter in a movie with like. So these two comedians, remember? Very, very famous. Ready to rumble? Yes. Yes. Remember that? I saw that in tears. I skipped school to right. see Ready to Rumble. Let's cheer this thing my mouth is watering. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. So Immediate reaction. The heat hits immediately. The heat doesn't creep up. It kicks the damn door in. Well, yeah, you f***ing jalapeno, like the, like the little jalapeno. Oh, yeah. But an explosion of flavor that makes me say this is entirely worth the pain I'll feel in the morning. Mm -hmm. How is yours? It's really crunchy. I have three different flavors. There's the beef, the chicharron, and the cena. And then adding the salsa that has chipotle. Chipotle sauce. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. This is like a sloppy <laughs> joke. This is so damn big and messy. Uh, Yo, they say in the movie Jaws, we're gonna need a bigger boat. I'm saying right now, we're gonna need more napkins. Yep. When we turn the tables. I'm gonna turn the table oh, on you. You gotta turn the table. Oh, and now he's gonna interview me. Interview you. I mean, I mean. Okay. Let it roll out. Who was the first wrestler you saw where you felt like you had seen a piece of yourself? Who was the one, first wrestler you identified? Sarah Scott. Um, yeah. Who's that? She wrestled in Mexico. Okay. So she was a Canadian, and it was like taken by Me the Mexicans. Like he was, she was Mexican. And I really like her energy. She kind of like, she kind of like body similar to mine. And then when okay. I saw her, I was like, I think she's gonna be like, she's gonna be like a homie, you know? It's funny you say body similar to mine, because the men I identified with growing up were Chris Farley and Philip Seymour Hoffman. Mm -hmm. So there was a weird thing where it wasn't even about the acting. Part of it was just like, oh, you look like me and you're in movies. Maybe I can be in movies. And there you are. No, no, no. Do you have any memories? Talking about memories and stuff of your first Mexican food experience. This is gonna sound like blasphemy. I'm telling you, tough about. I grew up in Michigan. What do you expect? <laughs> I didn't have an abuela to make me like to make me stuff. Taco Bell, guys. He said it. Taco. Bell. Listen, my mom pulled me out of class in second grade. And she goes, hey, honey, we gotta leave school. And I thought there was like a family emergency. Mm -hmm. No, it was my birthday and she just pulled me out of school to play hooky. I had three tacos at Taco Bell. And then we went on a shopping spree at Toys R Us. And then I went bowling. Next question. A wrestler who either passed away or retired, who you wish you could have wrestled? Well, I want to wrestle Beth Phoenix. She Put knows it that. out there. She Put knows it that. out there. She knows that. Um, I'm homies with Adam Copeland. Maybe we can set this up. Her, um, I want to have a, when, you know when they do retirement sports? I want to have a match, uh, match with Medusa. Medusa? Yeah. Wow. Retire her once and for all. You don't just want to have a match in there, you want to retire her ass. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Never stopped for her. She's in Canada right now, I don't know if she's like fully retired. But I've definitely heard. I was like, she was like, one of the women that I look up to, she was 
She was really, really good in there. Um, that one. I need to see her. I don't know her. You have to. All right. So, guys, as you guys know, he's a really well-known actor. I told you, like we were saying earlier, I totally marked out because I just watched a movie with Clint Eastwood. Which is yours? Yeah, dude. Like, which I thought. Well, we went to see it at the movie theater. Man. And I was like, hey, you and your family? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was like, yo, I remember a couple of times, I was like, yo, I just met him. I was like, who? Oh, the guy from the cleanest with movie. He was like, nah. And I was like, some kind of fish. He was like, oh, I thought you were lying. <laughs> He's a big fan. So, saying that, That's cool. you have done about 20 films with some amazing performance, and you've been directed by incredible directors such as Spike Lee twice. Spike Lee. Clint <laughs> what are the differences for like when you're on set, when you're on set between like those and how do you feel? Yeah, so like I'll start with the commonality. Mm -hmm. The commonality between Clint and Spike. Ooh, I'm feeling the heat by the way. Like some sour cream, some white boy sour cream right now would be really good. You want some sour cream? I feel like it'd be me bitching out. <laughs> I feel I feel like I would feel bad. I am bad. Crema? Crema or or an ambulance. Crema or or an ambulance. It's burning. Either one. It's burning. I hear water helps when your throat is hot. Kidding. Yeah, water helps when your throat is hot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hibiscus. So no, 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 no. <laughs> You sure? You sure you don't need one? Bro, I'm Mexican. I'm good. I can handle this. Sell that t-shirt. I'm Mexican. I'm good. I can handle this. <laughs> Sell it. I, I will buy one. So, Spike and Clint, they both come really prepared. The crew people they hire are like top of the line. My favorite. People they've worked with forever. Honestly, it's kind of like if you were to start a wrestling company from scratch, which TK had to do, you want to hire people who've done it at a high level yes. for a long time. Yes. So, Clint and Spike have done that, and they've worked with people for so long that there's just a quick hand with everybody. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it makes it easy on the actors, where we don't have to answer all these questions. It's been answered for us. But that was, that's a commonality. The difference is... Clint is very. Okay, well. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Do you want me to get that put out of the way for you? See, for power. Thank you. Clint is very quiet and kind of like introspective, and Spike is a little more like in your face. If he loves something, he'll come and hug you and like embrace you. Yeah. <laughs> if he hates something, he'll shout at you. Like it's just like <laughs> it's a whole different vibe. It's almost like two coaches. Yes. Yeah. Like you watch football, there are those coaches that are screaming at the players. And there are those coaches who look like they're all in their head. You know, the heady, the heady is Clint, the external is Spike, but I love them both so much. Like, I would, you ever find a leader who you would just die for? Yes. You march into the gates of, of hell for them? Those are guys like that. Oh. When, I, tell us a story of, like, the worst experience you've ever had. Like, you could have fucking memorized the fucking dial. Um... I'll, I'll pick, I'll, I'll find a point of, uh, man, I'm like embarrassed to talk about this, whatever. <laughs> I'm like stuttering over my words because I know what the moment is, but I haven't talked about it with anyone yet. So, this past summer, I got sober from uh, alcohol and eventually sober from uh, marijuana because I was using it constantly for anxiety and sleep. Now I'm just cleaning up my life and I sleep okay, which who knew? But <laughs> but and I don't vilify any of it. I still I miss old fashions. I love I love weed to some degree, but like for where I need to go in my future, I gotta chill the f So You my, hear that guys, you hear that? He's challenging himself to do something that he it was hard because this is something that I've been talking about with my fans. Yeah, parenting one, so challenging yourself to do something you are uncomfortable with. Yeah, very much so. And uh, and what happened was, over the summer, I was shooting a scene with Taron Egerton from Rocket Man and uh, the movie Sing. He does the voice of Johnny the Gorilla. Incredible actor. And we had a day where I couldn't remember my dialogue. And I always remember my dialogue. Like I'm very, 95% of the time, I'm 
great with it. But on this particular day, I was tired, frustrated, and the words were not coming to me. And even if the words did come out, they were so poorly memorized that the performance would be crap. <coughs> so I said to my assistant at the time, this guy Anthony, I go, tomorrow or this weekend we're throwing out the bar cart. I had like a $900 bar cart full of booze. And here's the crazy part. This is how you know you got a good friend. I told him on a Thursday, throw out the bar cart on Saturday. The next morning, all the booze was gone. The bar cart was empty. Because he knew that as an addictive person, I wanted that one more night to while out before I got rid of it on Saturday. And he said, no, man, you, you realize the opportunity you have before you. You have to honor it and make the hard decisions. So that was a moment where I forgot my dialogue and felt like shit, <laughs> but realized it was something deeper. I didn't just flub some words. I, I was flubbing my life a little bit. So. Wow. Well, it was a life-loving <laughs> yeah. Harsh. But D I'm, I'm really tight with DDP. And DDP helped me lose 40 pounds to play the serial killer role in the show. I stayed at his house for seven weeks. And the guy taught me so much about myself, taught me how to love myself, taught me how to lose weight and be healthier. I desperately want to level up. Desperately. I want to lose weight, stay sober, and uh, become a producer director and, and get to that next level. Well, you know, Thunder Rosa is working on her acting skills. <laughs> Coming up pretty soon. She's I don't not know about shy. My Look at that. She's not shy. She just billboarded herself. I just did. I, um, <laughs> have you seen my movie Queen Pins? I have not. Yet. Oh, you're crazy. You have to because Queen Pins is the first movie in Hollywood to reference AEW. I read the script and it had WWE references. You're like, nah. And I said to the filmmakers, I go, can we change those to AEW? I'm friendly with Tony Khan. I think he was he was a decent deal on licensing the images. Um, so they changed it to WWE and the opening of the original Dynamite and an AEW t-shirt are in the movie. <clears throat> I've cleared my throat a hundred times because I'm still processing it. <laughs> Oh, the By the way, the chopped onion, pretty good. Right? I didn't, I didn't dislike it. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll expand my horizons a little bit. Just a little bit. Question for you. Okay. If you could have a three-way dance, a triangle match, as WCW used to call it, mm -hmm. two competitors, any promotion curve, <clears throat> you and two other women, who do you choose? She's the current champion of NXT, uh, London, Britain. What's her name? I don't know either. I've watched that extended She's a Japanese, she's just a gen Japanese wrestler. And I, ju I literally just, I was just watching her. It's one of my favorites. But if Manami Toyota, like back in the 90s, okay. she will be like, every time I want to get violent, I I would love to visit her. Like, oh, that's like, cool. yeah. So the part B to that question is, if you could play any role in any movie, what type of movie would it be and what type of role would you want to play? I would love to play like an action movie. I've, okay. done, I, I've done stunts in Lucha Underground, so I thought it was like one of the funniest, coolest things to do. Yeah. Uh, I would love to play Wolverine. Wolverine? That would be Wolverine, and I'll let you know. You, as you guys saw me as Wolverine, I think that would be really cool. And that it went really, really well. The, the creator of Wolverine, the, the new one, the women, uh, he gave me a thumbs up, so uh, he loved it. So I'm just putting it out there for the Marvel. Put it into the universe. And the universe. The Marvel so, universe. Marvel and the universe. Because like I said, I always, everybody knows now, like, well, my followers know that I wanted to be a soap opera actress. Growing up, that's what I wanted, you know? The super yeah. exaggerated girl that is super poor, very some the rich guy, and but then, it isn't what she thought. <laughs> exactly, he's killing people. Oh, no, 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 he's like the cousin that wants to be with him. Like, she's the murderer. It was just so weird. Like, some of the stories, I'm like, people have issues, man. Like, or the guys are still like, or the girls, like, super so toxic. It's like a soap opera. You know what I realized recently? This is like a big moment for me that I've cinched into, which is we think that crazy stories are crazy. Most of life is crazy. What's actually, actually crazy 
is when people have peace and are healthy and living a normal quiet life. That is crazy. You meet somebody who lives on a farm and they're content and they're happy yeah, and, they're, and they're fit, like, that's crazy. We have some, like, we have crazy lives. Us chasing know. dreams of wrestling and being movie stars. Yeah, it's, it's That's crazy. normal, because we are all crazy. Yeah, we're crazy. We're crazy. And the last part of my blog, we give a rate to the tacos. I want you to rate the tacos that you just ate. So listen, I did not grow up with authentic tacos, but in my adult life the last 10 years, I've had a lot of great tacos in Los Angeles. These, I'm gonna say that first scary one that looked like the face of a monster with the chopped onion and jalapeno, I'm going to give that a nine out of 10. What about El Pastor? El Pastor. I'm gonna give a seven, seven and a half. Uh -huh. what, what made it not as good as usually? You know, it was good, but it needed more pineapple. It was just like the tiniest little piece. And like, he likes pineapple in his tacos, y'all. Like, some people are like haters and they don't like pineapple on tacos. I like pineapple on tacos and pizza, Straight up. But I guess I like pineapples. So. Yeah, he likes pineapples. My taco, the first one, the Kankachana, it was different. I never had tocina. It was crunchy. It was. Perfect, and then with the salsa that they give us, it just went super well. I give it a 10. The cactus one, you can miss it. It's cactus with I love, I love cactus. You said you never had cactus before. No, no, no. You asked me if I had had Kishon or No, cactus. Oh, no, I have had cactus. <laughs> I've had it in like um, like a Mexican soup. I've had soup with cactus in it. Like a red soup. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what you know what you got, right? You know, see, he's a little Mexican. He's quite so, a little Mexican. There's going to be a part two, and in the part two, we got to do breakfast, not dinner. Yes. Because I want some freaking. Uh, Chorizo con huevo. I mean, I, I love Chris Boyle, but I. Can't get it. I, yeah. What do you want? I want, I want um, the thing with the tortillas. God, this sounds so white. <laughs> I want the thing with the tortillas. No, oh, no. la que dijiste. It's like breakfast nachos. What are they called? Oh, chilaquiles. Chilaquiles. You want to high end, guys? Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're in LA, make sure you show up. That's Manolito. Manolito. Show, show up here. They, they have excellent service, great reviews, great tacos, and you actually can sit down and sleep. You might meet a celebrity. Yeah, you might. You might. With that said, don't forget to like, subscribe, click on the like, uh, and then sign up for the. Notifications and all the patrons, thank you so much. This is the reason why I'm here in LA because of you guys. Now I'm able to pay for my trips. So <laughs> don't forget next time. I will be seeing you pretty soon. We're gonna be doing our live taco dinner with you guys, and I can't wait to see you. Yeah, I have live well, taco dinner. We do Zoom Zoom with my fans. That's amazing. Yes, we all love tacos, and I want them to eat tacos with me. So. You know what? It would be nice to bring you to Mission Pro, so you can you can either be a ballet or a uh, manager or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done it. Done it. Done it. Done it. Done it. You want to? Yeah. Yeah. He said it. I want to put it in there. It's on camera. Hell yeah! Oh my god, that was so awesome. Whatever you, you make me food, I'll come be your um your Paul Heyman. <laughs> Okay, too. Have fun. Healthy and happy. And if you don't like tacos, what the hell is the Yeah, what's wrong with you?